Hello and welcome back to part five of this workshop around flex connectors for ArcSight. Now, if you remember, uh, we actually went through a whole, so, a whole lot of stuff around processing the message, getting the token set right, and then finally, just just now, just doing the uh, the mapping uh, to particular fields. However, this is still not quite good enough for what we need. We do need to do some final mapping to make sure that we have everything in place. Now, one of those first things we need to do is we need to give it three pieces of information. We need to give it the vendor, the product, and the event class ID. Uh, what that means is that those are the three things that are used for the categorization. If you don't have those set at all, or one of those is missing, then you won't get any categorization applied. Now we do need to define that categorization as well, uh, but that can come later. That's not essential, but to get that uh, set correctly, and it is a recommendation to make sure that you have as a minimum, those three fields always set, device product, device vendor, and event class ID. Now, uh, that's not going to do it for us. We need to do this. So just as much as we've set everything with regards to doing the parsing and the tokenization, we can actually just make those changes at the bottom here in the actual, what would eventually be the configuration file. So what we can do is actually just take that information and put it straight in. Again, what I can do is I can just flick back to the documentation just to give an illustration of some of the things you should be setting in here. Now, uh, you'll see here it just says uh, device vendor and device product. In this example, it's it's running a particular uh, command to get that vendor. But typically, I tend to use this uh, string constant uh, just to set it as a particular product at that point. So um, to save myself, what I can actually just do, uh, very quickly do is just uh, highlight uh, the particular section uh, and again just to illustrate a couple of things here we can just copy and paste uh, so don't be afraid to uh, to do that as well so again I can just copy and whoops and paste uh, and again we just use the same string constant section so underscore string constant again lowercase s capital T bracket so the product is um, door access system I don't know call it whatever I want really uh, string constant uh, So I'm just calling it a fictitious product name uh, of access like that. Um, and then the other final one that we need do need to set, as I mentioned it before, with those three key bits of information is device event class ID. And again, we can just enter that mapping here. So uh, event, whoops, event dot device class device event class ID equals. So again, the naming convention still applies here. So lowercase d, capital E, capital C, capital I uh, for the field name there. Uh, again, do check in the documentation around that uh, so you get the correct field names. Uh, you can just type them in here uh, as I've done uh, and just make sure that you have that uh, applied accordingly. Just a little bit about event class ID specifically. This is something to define this particular event as a unique event. Uh, it doesn't have to be specifically and directly unique, but it's designed to be something that means that it's a quick reference to this particular type of event, so it's very easily identified, uh, so we can understand what is going on. Now, I'm going to cheat here uh, to indicate this specifically type of event. Uh, I'm actually going to use this as... Uh, in this example, uh, I'm going to use this as uh, the what I've already set as the direction. There's only two types of event here, in and out. Uh, so in that example, I'm actually going to set that to be, uh, in this example, the device custom string. So, uh, so it then becomes uh, what I set to be the direction, which is direction. Again, I could just use my label at this point. Uh, there's only two types, in and out, so that means that generically I'm going to set this device event class ID as either in or out as a particular type of message. What I also need to consider is uh, what I need to do for severity as well. 
So I do need to set the severities. Uh, Otherwise, if I don't do that, it's always going to come in as a medium severity, which is not particularly useful. So again, just referring to the documentation here, there is some uh, uh, examples here. So I I can just cheat and and, and copy that uh, just as an illustration. So copying it from the manuals, I can see the text there. Copy that, move over here paste that in so it's it's using map functionality so it's looking at something and then setting something so in this case it will set the severity to be very high if in this case device severity is of a particular so the, you can see these are uh, input codes or, or result codes from a, a http request for example so in this in this scenario uh, i only have limited data so uh, i'm actually really interested in a couple of things here with with what's going on uh, th- the way that it's been doing the processing is it's looking at the field there, so it's kind of post, post parsing, post tokenization, if you see what I mean at this point. Uh, so, so from here, uh, what I want to do, I don't really want to do the low severity, so let me just remove that. Uh, medium, uh, I actually want to do this on a particular uh, field. So in this example, I'm actually going to look at device custom string one. So device custom string one. Again, just to illustrate, I can I can copy and paste here, so I can copy, take severity, overwrite it. So set it to be medium if device custom string one is in, and set it to be high if it is out. For example, very simple, very easy, uh, and of course, once I've done that, uh, what I should do is I should save that, and there we go, uh, and then we've got further information here so we can see the vendor the product uh, the uh, device uh, device custom string one which is what we set before and then device event class id because we've also set it to be the same thing because we need that field for categorization uh, and then we can see all the other bits of information here as well so that is the majority of our file based flex connector parser operational and working and ready to go So what I do need to do is I need to stop this now and now actually start putting this particular configuration file. Because remember, this is all we've done here is we've actually just created this configuration file. So just a quick recap here. Uh, This is the regex we're using. We're tokenizing the data out. So we're we're breaking these down into six tokens. Remember, it starts with zero and goes through to five. We're given those tokens uh, particular names, labels. And then from there, all we're doing is just taking those... uh, particular labels and putting them into fields. There's a little bit of additional processing we need to make sure that we put a product, uh, a vendor and an event class ID field in there. Uh, and just for a little bit more completeness, completeness, we've also put in some severity too. Uh, so that should be ready to go. Uh, I'm, again, just make sure I save that. Uh, and I can also step through and just make sure everything is being parsed correctly, which it is as well. So this is just a file. And what we'll do in the next stage is now we've done that final bit of processing, we'll take that file, we'll put it into a flex connector, and we'll spin it up and actually get it processing. Thank you very much.